Good evening. This is Mike Jeffcoat, and this is for Module 3. Uh, we've got four questions in Module 3 that I wanted to address quickly. The first one is what skills described in Chapter 7 of Grohar, Murray, and Langland and identified in the Leadership Skills Questionnaire would you use to secure needed resources such as staff? Well, I, when I took the Leadership Skills Questionnaire, I scored a 26 on the uh, administrative, a 30 on the interpersonal, and only a 21 on the conceptual. And initially, I, I wanted to discount that conceptual uh, skill use, but, uh, you know, you need to be balanced in all three of them in order to be an effective manager. And, and you know, I would like to say you only need interpersonal, but that's not true. You need all three in order to be well balanced and to understand what you're doing and be an effective driver of the train, if you will. Uh, in other words, a, a leader and a manager. Um, and one of the things that I ran across in uh, on the book, on our textbook on page 148, is the new manager is cast into a role uh, whose tasks are conceptual. And as much as I'd like to discount the conceptual, there it is right there. You know, you have to have an understanding of the conceptual. So to, to go back and answer the question, you know, you've got management functions of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, and controlling. And you've got, you know, your skill sets that you need to use, but you need all of it in order to be effective. And then if you're lacking in one area, then you, you need to work on it. Uh, because in order to be a truly effective manager, you need to be balanced out in all three areas, in all three skill sets. The second question that I wanted to address deals with literature, and the question is, how would you use published literature in the process? Well, one of the things that I wanted to say about evidence-based practices, is, as critical as it is, you can't always just go looking for evidence-based practice. Sometimes you have to go out and you have to find a practice, and you become part of the evidence that the practice is based on. And if I'm not making myself clear, somebody somewhere has to start you know, a practice, and then after that, you find out whether or not it's effective. So what I'm saying is, as important as evidence-based practice is in all the things that you do, sometimes if you find a good ideal, and it's not necessarily life or death things, then maybe you should go out and see whether or not it works and become part of the evidence that the practice becomes based on. Uh, I did find an interesting article about oncology care, and the title of it is Transdisciplinary Coordination and Delivery of Care. It's about oncology care. But some of the things that they said in this article, like on page 155, while each discipline applies their evidence-based knowledge and skills, the plan of care is developed jointly by the team members to establish goals that are synergistic and not redundant. I think that's so important in today's uh, healthcare industry where we're trying to cut costs and things is not to be redundant, but to be truly synergistic and to to look at the things as a whole. Uh, and the other thing that struck me in the article was the key elements to support a transdisciplinary disciplinary approach include education, access to care, innovative models of care, collaborative research, and technology solutions. So having said that, I think all literature, you know, uh, I'm talking about professional literature, is critically important to uh, do your research of your literature before you address almost any and all problems uh, that might come up to you. The third question that I wanted to talk about were to identify the levels and departments that you need to work with in order to be effective in your roles. Well, I took the role, you know, in my head is, is okay, now I'm the unit manager of my med surge unit. One of the things I did, because my boss, my uh, unit manager is out on leave, so I went to his boss, and, and that was kind of interesting. I asked her for an organizational chart, and she didn't have one right at her fingertips, but she did mail me one, and, uh, and I had to laugh at it because it's n not anything like I'm used to seeing. Uh, certainly not from the education world and certainly not from the military world. And hopefully you can see that there. And we're somewhere uh, down at the bottom, uh, actually.
really right in here. So uh, it's not real clear, and she, she, I asked her, are we a, a horizontal structure or a vertical structure? And she said we're horizontal, but when I look at this, it doesn't look very horizontal. It looks more vertical. But more about that in, 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 um, in just a second. Let me go back to the question. Uh, who would you have to work with? Well, I'm in medical surgery unit. And so you have to be able to work with the emergency room if you were a unit manager because we get most of our patients from them. You have to be able to work with our hospitalists who actually don't work for the hospital per se. They're contract, they're a group that's contracted to the hospital. You've got to be able to, to work with the step down unit because we get a lot of patients moving down to med surge from step down. Sometimes we get them from the ICU and, uh, an overlooked place where that's really critical is just housekeeping. Uh, I mean, if we're jam full and we've discharged a patient, we've got to get quick turnaround on the room sometime. Uh, and if there was a C. diff patient in there, you've got to have terminal cleaning done in the room. So, you know, you've got to have a good rapport. You've got to, you've got to be able to work with uh, materials management. You've got to be able to work with security and basically, you know, you've got to be able to work with virtually everybody, human resources also, because, you know, that affects your staffing and your hiring and things like that. Um, so the, I don't think I've left anything out. Oh, pharmacy, that's a big thing to work with. I mean, our pharmacists are off for about eight hours out of the day. We've only got them 16 hours, so it's really critical that you're working closely with them to make sure that we've stocked plenty of medicines. And we don't have to go running all over the hospital to different omni cells trying to find out uh, where medicine's at, particularly. The fourth question that I need to address is uh, explain if you feel you would have a preference for a vertical or horizontal structure in a particular model and why. Well, as I, as I alluded to earlier, my boss's boss said that we were in a horizontal model and you know I do favor um, a horizontal model because it's the horizontal model is about decentralization and uh, you decentralize and you put the uh, let me just read it from page 173 when delegation occurs on the organizational level it involves giving more autonomy to subunits and it's called decentralization the movement in healthcare toward decentralization has occurred because of the reduction of managers and the goal to empower professionals at the operative level. Okay, and then it goes on to say decentralization is often termed horizontal management because it aims to flatten the hierarchical organization structure and allows the staff nurse the opportunity to take more initiative and to become more autonomous. And that's what I'm all about more autonomy for your nurses. The practical result of this practice has been to eliminate or reduce middle management and to give the frontline manager more authority and more responsibility. And of course, those two should go hand in hand. So I'm all about the uh, horizontal structure. And also, I, you know, after reading the things and actually asking my boss's boss, we practice at work, we practice the case management method. And uh, I like the case management method because it is more synergistic. It involves care beyond the hospital setting. And I think, you know, that's where our health care is going anyway, is beyond the hospital setting. And you've got to look out and pull all the different pieces in, and that's what a case manager is supposed to do, and make this synergistic effort and, and have it all fit in together not just in the hospital setting. Hopefully I've answered uh, those four questions, and I wish you all much joy today and get some sleep. All right, thank you.